Hello, I'm Sam Majoris from the University of Guelph. I'm here to talk about my research into the phylogenetic signal of subarctic beetle communities. Let's start with the question, what is phylogenetic community structure? Phylogenetic community structure investigates co-occurrence patterns at a given spatial scale. It is the quantification of the relatedness of species. Basically, it looks at whether closely related species are located in the same habitat or in a different habitat. There are two main patterns observed in phylogenetic community structure. There, of course, can be no pattern or a random pattern, but the two main patterns are clustering and overdispersion. So with clustering, closely related species are found in the same habitat, and this is shown on the left-hand figure. On these figures, each unique habitat is shown by a shape and a color. So closely related species share the same habitat, while more distantly related species are found in different habitats for clustering. This is often caused by environmental filtering. Closely related species possess the traits needed to survive in the habitat, while more distantly related species may lack these traits and therefore not be found in this environment. The second pattern, shown on the right-hand side, is overdispersion. This is where closely related species are found in different habitats, but distantly related species may share the same space. This is often caused by competitive exclusion. Closely related species may compete for the same resource, this results in one outcompeting the other and one moving to a different habitat or niche. Distantly related species may not compete for the same resource and can therefore share the habitat. For this study, I chose to focus on Coleoptera or beetles. I chose this task to judge their high diversity and variability of traits. There were 263,186 public records on the Barcode of Life database as of February 15, 2019. The region I chose to focus on was Churchill, Manitoba. This is a subarctic region, and there has been a great effort to barcode species in this area. DNA sequence data is a rich source of data for inferring relationships. DNA barcodes are standardized DNA sequences that are used for specimen identification and species discovery. The barcode most commonly used for animals is an approximately 658 base pair region of cytochrome C oxidase subunit 1, or CO1, a mitochondrial gene. So subarctic communities were changed and largely eliminated by glaciation. This was followed by post-glacial colonization with species coming from both the south and from the Virginian glacial refuge. One of the questions I seek to answer is, was this colonization random or not? This study aimed to investigate the phylogenetic community structure of Churchill, Manitoba and compare this to other regions in North America. I chose to use the more temperate region of Guelph, Ontario for comparison as much barcoding has been done in this region. The other goal is to compare the phylogenetic community structure and families with different traits. For this study, I focused on habitat preferences, terrestrial or aquatic, and feeding mode, herbivore, predator, or scavenger. I hypothesized that environmental filtering would impact community structure of subarctic communities due to the harsh environmental conditions present at higher latitudes. So, because of the higher environmental filtering occurring at these higher latitudes, only species that possess the traits needed to survive here will be found. Therefore, I would expect Churchill to be more clustered than the temperate region of Guelph. The second hypothesis is that the traits and characteristics of the species will influence the phylogenetic community structure. How these traits influence the community structure will depend on the trait. For example, I expect aquatic species to be more clustered than terrestrial species. Some studies have suggested that competition is less important in aquatic environments and that there is more environmental filtering. I would expect this to result in a more clustered pattern than habitats where competition is more important, like terrestrial environments. The data for this study was pulled from the Barcode of Life database, or BOLD. I used and filtered data from Canada and Alaska. All data filtering and analysis was performed using R. I then created a Churchill subset. This was done using coordinates determined from maps of Churchill and other studies performed in the area. A centroid was chosen for each bin. A centroid is a typical representative sequence for each bin, and the bins are clusters of barcode sequences similar to species. These sequences were then aligned, and maximum likelihood trees were generated. The net relatedness index and the nearest taxon index were found in order to determine phylogenetic community structure. ANOVA and phylogenetic generalized least squares analysis were then used to determine whether certain traits were more clustered than others. I will talk more about these tests in a moment.
Both NRI and NTI calculate phylogenetic community structure, but in different ways. NRI calculates the average distance between all pairs, as shown by the colored lines on the trees pictured. High NRI values means closer relationships between the species in a more clustered pattern. The species on the right-hand figure are more closely related and would therefore have a higher NRI. NTI just calculates the distance between nearest neighbors. Similar to NRI, the higher the NTI, the closer the relationship between the species and the more clustered. The right-hand figure shows more closely related species and a higher NTI. NRI and NTI are able to detect patterns at different levels in the phylogeny. Therefore, it is beneficial to use both when investigating phylogenetic community structure. So random draws of the same species richness as the tertia community were made from each family level phylogeny. This was repeated a thousand times. The observed NRI and NTI values were then compared against the null distribution to obtain a p-value. And this is how we determined whether the uh, families were clustered or overdispersed. To determine if certain traits were more clustered than others, an ANOVA was performed comparing the NRI and NTI values across trait categories. A phylogenetic generalized least squares analysis was also performed to determine if families with certain traits have particular clustering patterns while taking into account the whole phylogeny. The phylogeny used in this analysis was based on the literature. Pictured here is a maximum likelihood tree for the family Dytosidae. The blue dots represent species found in Churchill. Orange dots represent species found elsewhere in Canada and Alaska, but not in Churchill. As you can see, the Churchill species are clustered phylogenetically. This graph shows the phylogenetic clustering pattern for families present in Churchill. As you can see, most families exhibit a clustering pattern, with many families showing significant clustering. There is significant clustering of most families in this subarctic region. This graph shows the same thing, but for Guelph, Ontario. While there are still some significantly clustered families, there are a far greater number of overdispersed families here than in Churchill. A t-test was performed to compare the results between these two regions and found that there was not a significant difference. It is possible that Guelph is still far enough north to experience a large amount of environmental filtering. It would be interesting to compare this to other regions at a lower latitude. However, when comparing these two graphs, there does appear to be a trend toward clustering in the north. An interesting finding was that there was a greater percentage of the total species in Canada and Alaska found in Churchill for aquatic families than terrestrial. A chi-square test was performed to determine if habitat was independent from phylogenetic community structure and showed that these variables were not independent. There was a higher number of aquatic individuals than expected. Similarly, feeding mode and phylogenetic community structure were also not independent. For the ANOVA, there was no significant relationship found between the traits and the phylogenetic community structure. For the PGLS, however, predators were shown to be significantly more clustered than other feeding modes. This is likely due to their overwintering abilities that allow them to survive in the north. Most predators studied were also generalists. While there was no significant relationship between habitat and community structure, there was a trend toward increased clustering in aquatic families. This is likely due to the environmental filtering occurring in aquatic habitats. To summarize the main findings of the study, we found that aquatic families were better represented in the subarctic than terrestrial. There was a trend toward increased clustering in the north, a trend toward increased clustering in aquatic habitats, and a significant relationship between predators and phylogenetic community structure. The environmental filtering occurring in these environments will likely change with the changing climate. By understanding the current community structure and the factors and traits influencing this, we can predict how these communities are likely to change in the future. As for the question I asked earlier, was this colonization random? The results here suggest that it wasn't. Closely related species sharing similar traits were found in the subarctic communities due to the environmental filtering occurring in these areas. If temperate regions show less clustering than those in northern regions, as shown by the comparison between Guelph and Churchill in this study, we can expect communities to become less phylogenetically clustered as species move northward. Thank you to the members of my lab for the input on this project and the manuscript. Thank you to Matthew Orton, Jacqueline May, and Cameron Nugent for coding input. 
Thank you to NSERC and the Ted Morick Assistantship in Aquatic Biology for funding, and thank you to the Barcode of Life database for access to public data. And thank you all for listening.